Hey Hope here with another video for you, and today we are going over the Void Cast Deus to take down Golbez. Two things to take care of real quick before jumping in, we will set up clock spots and light parties. Jumping into the fight, Golbez will start off with a Terra Storm. This will spawn two meteors on corners opposite each other that explode in large AoEs. Dodge to an adjacent corner and wait for Lingering Spark. The end of this cast will leave a ground AoE that blows up shortly after, so make sure to move once the cast bar is finished. Next is a mechanic we will see a lot of, Phases of the Blade. Golbez will target a random player, and at the end of the cast bar, cleave half the arena, make sure to stand behind him, then run through as the cast bar finishes, as he will turn around and cleave the other half of the arena. Next is Binding Cold. This will deal moderate party-wide damage and apply a dot to everyone. Make sure to mitigate and heal. Following this, we have Gale Sphere. Golbez will summon four phantom images, one at a time. These will go to each cardinal and resolve in the order they appeared. It will always be north and south in either order first, and then east and west in either order. Each cardinal will have four orbs that shoot line AoEs across the arena forcing you to only have one column or row to work with at a time. To start, we find the first safe column and move to it. Then we move into the next column. But during this movement, Golbez will cast Arctic Assault. This spawns two ice sheets that will shoot out and make a quarter of the arena unsafe. So stay in your column and move up or down until you are no longer being hit by the ice. Now you have to deal with the east and west clones. This will always force you fully north or south, then the opposite. As you finish the series of dodges, he will cast another Phases of the Blade. This is a simple dodge behind him, then back after the cast bar completes, just like the first time. Then we have another Binding Cold. Following this is Void Meteor. This targets the two tanks and hits them five times, with the final one being the hardest. Then the boss casts as Daja's Shadow. This gives the boss a buff and makes a few abilities act different. This time, it will affect Black Fang. This hits the party with heavy damage six times. Then casts as Daja's Shadow again, this time telegraphing which form a later attack will take. More on this when we get there. For now, know this is also a tank buster that hits three times and each gives a stack of Flames of Eventide. If you get three stacks, you die even through invulnerability, so make sure you swap. Then another casting of Phases of the Shadow. We've seen this a couple times already, but this time it's powered up by the Asdaja Shadow. There are two forms it can take. If he has these swirls and the dragon circling around him, you will receive spread markers and he does a donut AoE. Make sure you stay under the hitbox until the donut goes off, then step out for the spread. In the other, he only has the dragon and a few crystals circling around him. Then you will receive stack markers on both healers, and he does a point blank AoE. Now he'll dash to the north side of the arena and do what looks like a lot is going on with double meteor. In this mechanic, a healer will be targeted with a knockback centered on themselves, which will knock everyone away. One support and one DPS will be marked with flare, and two towers will spawn, one needing three players and the other needing two players. To resolve this, we send the DPS north, going to the tower if you have nothing, and to the empty corner if you have a flare. And the supports do the same. Nothing's in the tower, flare to the empty corner south. One final thing to note is that the healer in the center of the arena will be tethered to a dragon that drops when the knockback goes off. Simply take a step south as it shoots a wide line AoE at your position. Another has Daja's shadow. You will need to hold on to this telegraph for a while. Unrelatedly, he casts Void Stardust. This will spawn two AoEs on the ground in opposite corners. Then more ground AoEs will be telegraphed in a straight line from the original. This hits the wall, bounces up a tile, and then goes back to a spot adjacent where it started. 
Additionally, you have two stack enumerations on either all DPS or all supports. Split your party into East Group 2 and West Group 1, and players move next to the ground AoE when it spawns. Now, when it telegraphs, you move adjacent to it where it did not telegraph first. When the original AoE goes away, move in. You're given a brief pause to handle the enumerations. You will be pairing yourself melee with tank and healer with ranged. The melee and tank pair can move up to the boss while the ranged plant. As soon as these resolve, Golbez will either cast Eventide Triad or Eventide Fall. In Triad, one DPS, one healer, and one tank each will be hit with a cleave. This applies a magic vulnerability so you cannot be hit twice. Simply have your tanks go north, healer southeast, and DPS southwest. If it is Eventide Fall, there will be a stack on each healer, so simply have your groups east and west. Following this, we have another Binding Cold, another Void Meteor, Make sure to stack north and south as this finishes. And phases of the shadow. Now, do you remember the telegraph he gave you before all this began? Because after the back and front dodges, you will need to either handle being in with spread or out with stack. Next is an upgraded version of Terra Storm from the beginning. This starts the same way with two meteors hitting two corners. But as you go to a corner, you will have to deal with Arctic Assault making it so only one corner is actually safe. And you have two stack markers to deal with. Identify the two safe corners, then if the one you plan to go to is unsafe, simply take the other. As for the stacks, have group two be further out and group one further in. Another binding cold. After centering himself again, Golbez will cast an upgraded Gale Sphere. In addition to the copies blocking off large portions of the arena, you will have to handle a set of stacks, a set of enumerations, and an arctic assault during this mechanic. To resolve, start in position for enumerations. Have your melees from each group inside, with group 2 being north. If it's enumeration, you have no changes to make. If it's stack, simply collapse together. Next dodge the second north or south clone in the quadrant safe from ice. As you move from your second to your third dodge, start positioning for enumeration or spread, keeping melee close to center in group 2 east, group 1 west. Finally, move north or south and resolve the final mechanic. After this is over, you get a normal phases of the blade, another binding cold, Another as Dodge's Shadow, giving you a telegraph for the future and that tank buster to deal with. Next is Void Stardust again. This time it spawns the ground AoEs off of the corner. You want to move to the corner closest to them, then move into their original location once they go off. Use the same priority as before with Group 2 East and Group 1 West, because yet again you have enumerations. And as these enumerations go off, you have Lingering Spark again. This will again leave behind an AoE, so wait for the cast to finish and go to a spot where nobody else was standing. Following this is another Eventide Fall or Eventide Triad. This will conclude with a Phases of the Shadow that is combined with the earlier Telegraph for In and Spread or Out and Stack. We get a repeat of Double Meteor with nothing changed another Void Meteor, the third and final Gale Sphere. Just like last time, it is followed up with a Phases of the Blade, another Binding Cold, as Dodge's Shadow is cast again with another Telegraph. This time, however, the Telegraph is used right away on Phases of the Shadow. Now that we're heading into an Enrage sequence, he casts Binding Cold twice, Void Meteor, as Dodge's Shadow, and a final Black Fang, in rage. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment and a like. I try to be more aggressive cutting out the boring or repetitive parts. Have a nice day.